Shaggy. Hello, welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy, and I'm your host of this vintage knitting podcast, or vintage inspired. In a previous episode, I promised that I was going to make this the year of Fifi, finish it first. And while the temptation of casting on new project, especially when the yarn has already arrived for it, is really eating away at me, I'm trying to behave. So let me show you a pair of mittens that are drying out right now. I'm blocking them. These are for my son. They are um, convertible mittens, so you can open it up. Oops, I didn't leave that in yet. But it opens up so you can do your smartphone or have access to your fingers. So anyway, these are finished. Yay. And of course, there are a couple of works in progress that are nearing completion, and I wanted to share those with you today. So I've talked about the sweater that I'm designing, which is called Thelma by Countess Furness. And it would be easier to see if I put my hand inside. Um, there are stripes of mohair alternating with wool. And I wanted to say a little something about that. My preferred method of connecting a new ball of yarn is spit splicing. And you can do that when you're working with wool. But when you're working with mohair, you can't. And because of the sheerness of this, I really wasn't able to weave in the connection, which I sometimes do, because it was very visible. So I had to wait until I was at the end of the row to really start adding in a new mohair. This thing you can see has tons of loose ends. Um, this is the most difficult thing I've ever knit. I really bit off perhaps more than I could chew because it's a dolman sleeve. I didn't really know um, the best shape for that. And actually, it's not the full length of the sleeve. There'll be ribbing along here, which let me go to the other sleeve to show you because I've started. Um, yeah, the sleeve, I've stitched the underarm all from the um, ribbing straight on up and around down the arm. And then I'm just now starting to add the ribbing on here. I picked up stitches around. And there's also a seam going down the upper part of the sleeve. So this sleeve has two seams, one up here and one down here. And it's, it's coming together. That's the right front. The left front I haven't stitched up yet. But you can see I've made quite a bit of progress. It's on its way to being assembled. This was an interesting challenge for me. You might remember that I had a loose front and I wanted to connect it to the solid bottom piece. The bottom doesn't have the mohair in it. The top part has the stripes of uh, mohair alternating. So I very, very carefully grafted this top part. This is a selvage edge. It's not a cast on or a bind off edge. This is going up the side and you can see it's diagonal. So it's not the neatest edging to work off of, but I left live stitches on the bottom part and I grafted, I think it's called a half graft because I was grafting live stitches to non-live stitches, one little stitch at a time all the way across on that side. And then this piece on the other side. 
Now that's going to be front and center. So it was pretty important to me that that be fairly neat, as neat as I could get it. And I think when it's blocked, it might settle down a little. It's challenging. It was challenging. I'm still pinned together here, but anyway, you can see that it is taking shape and it will become a finished product. Hopefully in the, in the not too distant future. Now, another thing that I've been working on not very long, just a couple of weeks, I think I started maybe uh, 18, about 16 or 18 days ago. This is Mary Mac from Prairie Prancers. Let me show you the back. With this pattern, I have to say, I'm always so concerned about fit. I have a very hard time because I don't have a really a beautifully proportioned figure. I have narrow shoulders and wider hips mm -hmm. with a, a bit of a waistline. So even with store-bought clothes, fit is always an issue for me. I could go into a store and try on 20 or 30 pairs of slacks before I find one pair that sort of fits. Same thing with dresses and tops, suits, forget about it, bathing suits, let's not even go there. So I'm tired of knitting things that I have to rip back and rework. Um, you might remember the gray sweater that has the ruffles, the fabric ruffles. And I talked about the sleeves, that they were so voluminous. I ripped them out more than once to get them to be right. Um, so this sweater, I decided to knit the sleeve first for a couple of reasons. Instead of making a swatch that would be like 20 rows and 20 or 30 stitches, I thought, well, that's kind of like a piece of my sleeve. I mean, I've heard other people do this. I didn't come up with this like, beautiful idea myself. So I just started in, I, I did a little teeny gauge, small piece, just to see like which are the right needles for me to get sort of the fabric. And then I started knitting the sleeve from the cuff, from the ribbing on up. And I must admit, I thought this was a brilliant idea because it gave me an opportunity to get acclimated to how to do the intarsia. So this pattern happens to call for working one ball of the main color up this side and another ball up that side and then you have this third color going in the middle um so there's a, a you know a bit of joining and i wanted to make sure that i got acclimated to that before i tackled the front of the sweater which is going to be prominent so i did one sleeve and all along i kept trying it on to make sure that i could get my arm in here and to make sure that it wasn't too big and it wasn't too small. Now, I'm not very accustomed to doing outer wear, and this is gonna be most likely a, a heavy, it's a chunky yarn, so it's probably gonna be a warm jacket that I'll wanna wear something under. So I wasn't sure how much ease to allow. And let me remind you, the pattern I'm working from is a child's pattern, and I'm enlarging it. I'm, just, you know, it's a lot of guesswork. So every step of the way, I tried on the sleeve to make sure that I was increasing enough that it would fit. This pattern gives the option of a set-in sleeve or a raglan sleeve. And I read somewhere that raglan sleeves are not as becoming on people who don't have wide shoulders. Here I am wearing raglan. Nevertheless, um, I, I went with the set-in sleeve. So first I did the sleeve, then I went to the back because I thought if I knit that, I'll have a good part of the sweater completed, almost 50%. This knit up in two or three days, the sleeve. The back took me a few days also. So it was really humming along. I'm on a size eight needle here. After I did the first sleeve and the back, then I did the left hand side because I already had the sleeve basted onto the back. So I thought, well, if I connect the left front, 
then I could connect the left front to the sleeve and the back, and I'd be able to try half of my sweater line from here up through the sleeve and all the way around the back. And then I could see pretty much if it was coming down halfway on the side. And it looked like uh, I, you know, I made some good choices about number of stitches and uh, so forth. So then I went ahead and I knit the second front, the right front, and this is now stitched up. Oh, sorry, not just basted. Um, everything is basted. I am almost done the second sleeve. And after that, I just have the collar to do. So this is coming along very quickly. Really easy to do pattern. If anybody's interested in doing it, I can highly recommend it. Not too difficult. And boy, the joy of knitting something that you get such instant gratification because it's just humming along. Boom, you're finished the sleeve. Boom, you're finished the back. I'm so used to knitting on size two and three needles where it takes weeks to do a sleeve sometimes for me. The sweater that I'm wearing has a difficult to pronounce name. It's called something like Maiha, Maiha Paita by Mary we know now that's a lot of alliteration there with the M's. I know that I messed that name up. Um, let me stand up and back up so you can see more of it. I did this a while ago. I did this before I started podcasting. It's rather long, but I think it's great ski sweater, acne ski sweater. So these are a sort of cable. In a very narrow cable, they just don't crisscross. And I, I thought it was interesting because it's asymmetrical. It's very unusual. I mean, I don't see a lot of things done like this. Um, I have a number of gray sweaters, so I wanted something that would be a little different. And there's snaps here holding this together. Um, it's done in, you can see, reverse stockinette. And I feel like I'm ready for the ski slopes. I'm not really a skier. I went skiing once in my entire life many years ago. But it's a very cozy sweater. The yarn is Debbie Bliss Aaron. This was yarn that I originally bought to make a different sweater. but I thought the color wasn't exactly what I wanted for that other pattern. So I used it for this instead. And I, I just, I love it. Yeah, I really, really love the coverage. Um, it's nice and cozy and warm and the asymmetricality of it. So I would really love it if you would share with us things that you're working on. Um, you can either go to my Ravelry group which is called Show and Tell, or comment below where we can find you, where we can take a look at what you're working on. Maybe you want to uh, hashtag Show and Tell Knitting on Instagram and post some of what you're working on. It would be really fun for us to see what everybody else is doing, particularly if you're knitting from vintage patterns, which my next project is from uh, 1951. I haven't started yet, but that was my plan. After I finish the two things I showed you, I'll be moving on to a new cast on. Yay, my favorite thing. All right, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, I hope everybody's staying warm, staying safe. I know it's snowing where some of you are. See you next time. As my grandmother would say, toodaloo.